talented man with explosives. It's too bad he has to die. But there are times when sacrifices must be made. And unfortunately, this is one of those times. He won't feel a thing. When we set off his bomb a bit earlier than he expects. My God, Bo's got to be warned. Well, as you said, sir, there are too many loose ends. When Lord Cove dies, Major Austin will die with him. A long release of you, Cannon. Cove's death should kill any chance for any real lasting Irish peace. All we need now is for Aesop Buchanan to give us a new time and place for the meeting. Whatever Mr. Buchanan decides, it will be the wrong time and place for Lord Cove, Major Austin, and himself. I fought in the bloodiest campaigns in France, but until I climbed into that Porsche, Aesop, and you drove me here, oh, bless you. I never knew the true meaning of fear. Bertram, my son Bose is a bunch of terrorists running around just waiting to get a good shot at the great Lord Cove. Now, what the hell did you want me to do? Drive the scenic route? Asa! Oh, good oh. Lord. Not the terrorist. Worse. There you are. What is going on? Alex, honey, what are you doing here? I saw your car flying down Main Street from my office window, and I just wanted to make sure that nothing was wrong. No, no, there's nothing wrong, so why don't you go back to City Hall, honey? I'm sorry we haven't had an opportunity to meet. I am Ace's wife, Alexandra, and you are... Delighted to meet you finally. I've heard so much. I'm an old friend, Bertram Cove. As in Lord Cove. I cannot believe this. Dylan crashed your shower. Yeah, well, I'm just glad he showed up after the dancer left. Well, I'm just sorry the dancer left. <laughs> Period. God, Marty, the look on your face when you No, the don't, dance. don't. I was there. Please don't remind me. I should have expected that Renee would surprise me like that. Hey, you guys, how about some help over here, huh? Oh, no, you don't. You're on your own, remember? I just came to help bring the presents home. Right, I said to help bring the presents home. <laughs> but come on, I've learned my lessons. You better grab them, they're gonna break. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Got that? Fingers. <laughs> Just remind me next time I won't be crashing any more showers, right? Oh, I'm glad you crashed my shower. Next time, just get uh -huh. Antonio to crash it with you. And why would that be, huh? I don't know, just to help bring home the presents? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It's too late. There aren't going to be any more next times. Just this time. The first time. It's going to be only time. What kind of farmer are you? Antonio. Have you ever sent me back? Early on. Take a seat. I'm not looking to sit down. Well, I believe there's something you are looking for. You know, I've never known a loan shark who got into this kind of green. Oh, sticks and stones will break my bones and all that. Listen, you can call me loan shark. That's fine. But you're here because you need something. You need cash, and you can't get it anyplace else. So take a seat, or take a walk. We can get down to business. Hey. Hey, there you are. I'm starting to think something happened to you. Look at you. Good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you, too. Please, have a seat. I, uh... I, I can't stay. I'm what? I'm having one of those days. Oh, you know? no. Sorry. So what are you doing in Boston? Well, you know, same old stuff. A little business. You know, begin and enterprises, never sleeps. And so we trust. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so you just came by to say hello? Well, actually, I was hoping that I uh, might be able to bring you back to Landview with me. You know, I did fly here in the corporate jet. Oh, the corporate jet. You like that jet. Yeah, the jet's cool. <laughs> so what do you say? Before we uh, get into that, have you heard from anyone in Landview about um, Frankie's test? Did Max take him in for his follow-up test? 
Actually, now that you mention it, I think you should be going in for that appointment right about now. Uh, Tina, would you mind uh, taking Frankie for a walk? I'm... I just need to talk with the doc a few seconds, okay? Sure, I'll bring the car around, okay? Oh, all right. Can well, I yeah. yeah. Thank I'm you. Get the hand here. Thank you. Right. Come on. It's all right, Frankie. I'll be right there. Yeah. Mr. Holden, would you like to sit down? Why? The test results came out negative. There's no problem with this hearing, right? The tests were conclusive. There is an impairment. It's severe. You tell... Are you, are you saying... you can't hear? I'm afraid I am. So you have answered my question. You know, let me take you back to Landview. I'm not coming back. Ever? This is where I belong. I know I have a lot of anger that I still need to sort out. Towards your father, right? Right, and I will somehow. I mean, if I don't, then I can't move forward with my life here. But this is my home. I know that. What? I don't know. Let me ask you something. The only thing you really asked me about was Max. What's up with that? No, I asked you about Frankie and his hearing test. Yeah, right. Max's little boy. Look, I, I don't know what happened between you and Max. But obviously it was something big enough to drive you back here to Boston. Cord, uh, can we just move on with this Mac stuff? I mean, look, you know what my life plans are. Two years ago, I finally decided who I am and what I need to make myself happy. And Max does not fit into those plans, does he? Look, I hear what you're saying, you know, but I'm worried about you because it seems like you keep coming up with these things Cord, to keep from going through. This is where I belong. I really have to be going. I'm so sorry. I... Well, sorry. Well, let me walk you back, at least, all right? No. No, I, I, I need to, to... I need the time. So, so this is it? Uh, I, I mean, can I... check in on you? You know, when I'm in town, on business, can I come see you, you know, see how you're doing? <laughs> yeah, I hope you will. I... I'm counting on it. You've been a really good friend to me. I still am. Today's test confirmed profound deafness. The lab results on Frankie's blood work show signs of a viral infection. Well, he's never been sick. I don't get it. What, what virus? The virus is called CMV. It's likely that your son was infected in vitro. Before he was born? Your wife was exposed at some point during her pregnancy. There are no symptoms to look for. There's no way to tell. She passed the virus to Frankie. Well, what about Lee? Frankie has a twin sister. She's probably fine. If there were any problems, they would have turned up by now. We can run tests to be sure. Mr. Holden, I know this is hard for you to accept, but in every other way, Frankie is a perfectly normal child. There's no reason he can't have a full and happy life. Yeah, how? You just told me he's handicapped. At least that's what you're trying to talk me into. Your son has a hearing impairment, but it's up to you whether that problem is thought of as a handicap it's a weakness. We all have them. Oh, gee. Don't 
Make it more than that. Yeah, well, that's that's really great advice, Doc. Really, really great. You know what? I'm really grateful for it. you. Just remind me to tell you how much sometime, huh? Mr. Holden, I have these. Look, we're finished. I want to go see my son. Really, Mr. Holden, I have these pamphlets that you might find helpful. Now. Javier tells me you need 50,000. I'm good for it. Oh, I know you are. Every last penny of it. Including the interest you're going to be shoveling on it, too. Oh, you know something, Antonio? I'm not surprised those bank boys turned you down. See, they don't like attitude. And I don't either. But I understand it. See, asking for help, well, it isn't easy for some people. No. It's not. So look, let's get on with it, all right? What's it gonna take and how much interest? For you? Well, I can offer you my ex-convict rate. It's only 30%, because I've been there. 30? Well, that's not too bad. I don't need to squeeze you any harder than that, and you know why? Because I've got a hobby. Farming. Calms the soul. You should try it. All I care about is getting that diner back. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Stay focused. That's how I got where I am today. Now, no one loaned me a dime, but I made a promise to help someone like me if I could. I'm not like you. Well, people who don't have enough credit or don't have the collateral, or maybe they're just a little too brown, they come see me, they walk out happy. Yeah, at 30%. Well, now I've got to cover my risk. Sometimes I end up trusting the wrong people. And if I make a bad loan, well, I lose it all. Yeah, right. And what is the guy who misses a payment, huh? What does he lose? Well, you won't have to worry about that. You're smart. You'll make a go of that diner. Oh, but feel free to shop around if you think my rates are too high. Otherwise, all I need is a handshake, and we've got a deal. So we're going to do business, Antonio. Well, there you go. That wasn't so hard, was it? So one of your dearest old friends comes to town and you don't say a thing. Honey, Lord Cove dropped right out of the blue, didn't you? Oh, yes, indeed. In fact, literally. I was winging my way towards your west coast and the aircraft developed a minor mechanical problem. So I had my pilot land in Philadelphia. Oh, how fortunate. So where were you flying from, Lord? My estate in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland, of course you were. So now I know who my husband has been having all of his mysterious meetings with lately. Here's something. We met a couple of times, Alex, to talk about business and old times. Wonderful. So, Lord Cove, have you and my husband been Alex, developing... Alex, we are in the middle of something right now. It's not a good time. Oh, really? Two old friends, Mrs. Buchanan, telling old war stories, chock full of people one's never met and places one's never been. Couldn't be duller. Oh, you know what? I don't mind a bit. <laughs> and, honey, Lord Cove wouldn't mind if you'd excuse yourself. See, he knows you may, and I've been bragging about you, honey. Oh, oh, no doubt you've so much to do in your city hall. Well, that's true. So I will leave you two boys to catch up with one another, but I will be so insulted if you don't convince your old friend to have dinner with us tonight, Asa, and I will not take no for an answer. <laughs> I'll see you later, both of you. I'm afraid she's already guessed there's more to this. She's clearly a very intelligent woman. She's too smart for her own damn good. Ta-da! <laughs> Great. What is it? Oh, come on, what is it? It's a salad shooter. 
Oh, so I see. So nowadays, if your salad's bad, then you just shoot it, huh? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Wait a second. Where are you going? You haven't looked at the rest of the presents. I'm going to get a beer. A man needs a beer. Anybody else want anything? He just doesn't appreciate the finer side of kitchen appliances. Well, actually, there's something here that uh, Andy gave me that you might know. Hey, no way. Enjoy. He doesn't see that till your wedding night. Come on, night. come on. Last call. You want something or not? Uh, coffee? Coffee? Make a pot? Oh, fine. You want me to make a pot of coffee? Uh, I'll stay in the kitchen while you're in here pulling uh, out things for our wedding night. Great. Yeah, appreciating Great. the, uh, the, what, the wonderful appliances like coffee makers. Yes, yes. <sighs> you're getting a great guy. Yeah, but will he make me coffee after we're married? <laughs> you know, that's the thing. Dylan isn't going to change a bit. It's, he's just all right there, you know? He doesn't hide anything. And some guys are so complicated. Yeah, I am lucky. Almost lost him. Hey, you know, and that says something about Dylan, too. You know, he knew it was just one night with you in, in uh, Ireland. He knows that you love him. Things are going to get a lot better after Patrick's gone. You know, I, I bet you can hardly wait till he's on a plane back to Dublin. I, uh... I just hope he's safe, that's all. Don't ask, I'm not really even supposed to say anything. Um... As it turned out, Patrick was telling the truth. People were really after him. Terrorists. What? Yeah, uh... All I can say right now is that he's trying to help Bo catch them. And I can't help it, I'm really worried. I mean, for both of them, you know, Patrick and Bo. Can we be sure that Major Austin will be close to the bomb when it explodes? Oh, he'll have a siege in the front row, I guarantee. I'll install a remote control receiver secretly in Major Austin's bomb. After he assembles it, it's a small piece of hardware. Shouldn't take very long. And when Lord Cove and Aether Buchanan arrive at the meeting place, money in hand, I'll collect the payment, set off the device, and ask Major Austin to step in to set the timer, believing he has plenty of time to get away. And the Major won't know that you have control of the clock? Correct. My guess is, right about when he's about to get to the bomb, boom, sounds perfect. Get it done. Ivers. Right behind you, Inspector. Got to warn Bo. This is what I need you to do, Ivers. What was that? are you doing? You'll see. It's her favorite gift. Doesn't he ever watch TV? No, he hates the commercials. He turns down the sound. <laughs> then he honestly doesn't know. Know what? Okay, I'll show you. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't tell me you got one of those remote control lights. <laughs> what do you think? Go ahead, you can try it. No, <laughs> What is it for exactly? I mean, what, we're going to be 90, 100 years old and we're going to be too lazy to get out of bed and clap and automatically it comes up? No, stupid. It's for when you're in bed, you don't want to get out. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> hey. I got it. Hey. Hey. Antonio, come on in. Mrs. Carpenter told me the shower was over. Oh, you must have just missed us. Mm -hmm. I, uh, missed you. Somebody's in a good mood. Things are looking up. Yeah. What kind of things are we talking about? You'll see. And with your wife as mayor, you were able to secure all the waterfront permits we needed in record time. Well, my grandson Cordero closed on all the waterfront property the day before yesterday. And all the acres that were undeveloped. I think we put the oil drill right here, huh? 
Well, why not, since we're not planning to drill? <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a great cover-up. I mean, who would guess that we're out there putting down fiber optic cable? Yes, well, I have to admit that I had more than a few doubts about our friend Poseidon at first. Frankly, I thought the man was... Loco? <laughs> so did I. What about this plan? An offshore platform starting a gambling ring through the Internet and setting up headquarters on a phony oil drill. Yes, and all this secrecy and computers. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's the times, Bertrand, and the world's changing. But whoever the hell he is, this Internet bit idea, I mean, it's a beaut. We give him an oil platform, and that gives him a great cover. And in return, we make a fortune. All three partners, Neptune, Atlantis, and Poseidon. And you know what the bottom line is? It's just a great bottom line. Now all we have to do is shake hands over the final agreement. Oh, I understand you've changed the meeting place and the time. When is it we're going to finally see face to face our very mysterious partner? Now don't you worry, I figured it all out. I'm gonna tell you something. The meeting's gonna happen sooner than you think. Sooner than Poseidon thinks. Thornhart, tell me, how are you feeling? I'm telling you, Tina, that is all that Dr. Wallace had to say. Well, what about what you're supposed to do next? About what? About finding a way to help Frankie. He's fine. Max, the doctors ran the test. Look, I don't care what they did. I don't care what they say. They don't know Luna. They don't... They... They don't know. This is Luna's son. Lunas. All right, maybe if I called Larry and we could try and find someone else and get a second opinion. You must be hungry. Max. What? What? Are you going to be okay? That's all. I'm sorry. Am I going to be okay? Boston, what's his cellular phone number? Hello, Cord 
driver to? Court, Tina. Tina, what's going on? Is there something wrong? Are the kids all right? Yeah, the kids are fine. That's not it. Tina, what is going on? I don't know what he's going to do. He who? Max. The test came back. Frankie is deaf. What? Only Max won't believe it, and he's not making any sense. He won't talk to anybody. And, Cord, you are his best friend. We need you to come home. Please, Cord. Somebody has to talk to Max. So, um... Are you sure you're ready for this? What? The wedding? Yeah, why? Well, you know. Marriage works for some people. Ah, so you're saying, what, it's not gonna work for me and Marty? Hey, come on, man. All the stuff that happened, mm -hmm. you know, between her and that guy, it bothered me, but I know. Mr. Ireland. Right. Right, and you know everything, and you're sure. Yeah. I mean, I believe what Marty told me. So, hey, come on, relax about it. Give me a break, all right? God's history. I told you, there's no getting away this time. Goodbye, Paddy. Want me to finish him off? Oh, no, 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 no. You go thank our superior for helping us with the lights. I'll finish, Mr. Thornhart. Well, Mr. Thornhart, <laughs> you've spun yourself a wild tale, but your story's coming to an end soon. A young, foolish professor of literature who has a nasty habit of poking about in places he doesn't belong. About to offer up his dying words to an empty TV studio. Well, be my guest. And I promise I'll even come to three. Go on. It's more sport than taking down a target in motion. A few small moments of hope before the end. No? Uh, the ending's the same either way. Oh! I'm ours! Darn it! So Asa has been meeting with Lord Cove in Northern Ireland, so he is involved with Poseidon, too. Well, maybe Lord Cove is Poseidon. No, he's not. I just have a feeling. Just like I have a feeling that whatever it is they're planning is about to happen. If I don't find out who Poseidon is now, I may never find out. Well, what if you can't? Can't? This man drugged me and tattooed me. I'm going to find a way. And? And what? Well, there's more than revenge in those eyes. So, he's obsessed with me a little bit mm. to do this. God only knows what he'd do if he had the chance again. And you'd like to know, wouldn't you? I'm intrigued, that's all. Mm. Why should it matter to you? Well, maybe I ought to find a way to tattoo you myself. How'd you like that? What I'd like is to go home and get on my husband's computer and try to set up a meeting with Poseidon. Mm. And if he will agree to a meeting, then I will need your help for that. Oh, I'll be there. If only to tell him to get in line. I'd appreciate that. Well, how much? With all my heart. So, I will try to set up the meeting. And uh, then I'll give you a call. Mm. Well, you've got my number. No, I do. Hello. Hey, look, if, I mean, if you say it's okay with you, it's okay with me. I mean, if you're happy, I'm happy for you. you know, friends gotta ask. Uh, thanks, I do appreciate it. Thanks for what? I like Marty. I mean, the, both of you are okay. <laughs> hey, look, um... Tell the two of them I got some stuff to take care of. Stuff. All right. As in secret stuff? 
All right, no more mysteries around here. Yes, sir, Captain. Hey, don't call me Captain. I'm not even a sergeant. Oh, my God, that's what the big mystery is. They got the results. They're supposed to be in today. Well, wait a second, Andy. Why didn't you tell us? Oh, I didn't want to jinx it. Hey, tell you what. Why don't you go to the station and uh, try to find out? And we'll meet at the diner, and you give me your news, and I'll give you mine. Deal? Deal. Okay, grab your car. Let's go. Uh, Bye. All right, good looking. Yeah, yeah call us and let us know what happened. Oh, as soon as I hear anything. Have fun yeah. with your present, thanks. You know, um, I didn't get a chance to give you my present that I got for you. The groom isn't supposed to give me a present. <clears throat> what is it? See, I know how you are. Come here. Sit down right over here. All right. Go ahead. <gasps> oh, Dylan, it's beautiful. Is it ivory? Yeah. Yeah, my grandfather, he got it for my grandmother when they got married. And, well, my grandmother gave it to my mom. Oh, I wish I could have known her. I wish she could be here. Yeah. She'd have loved you. Just as much as I did. Well, I better go ahead and get ready for the rehearsal. You know, we got to eat at the palace tonight, so... You know what? It's been a long time since I've been this happy. It's like a dream. Well, you know what? It's better than a dream. Because it's real. Mm. Something's gone wrong. I am going to give it one more try. And if I can't get Poseidon on the line, I am going to get up. And I'm going to worry along with you. I hate computers. Please respond. What did I tell you? Poseidon here. Wait. What is the new time and place? Ah, there you go, Bertram. Modern science at its best. Pass, get in here. I need you now. Sir, Ace of Buchanan's decided that the meeting will happen tonight. We'll be ready. Tonight at the Palace Hotel. I'm not so sure that's an ideal spot. Things could get messy. It can't be helped. I'll let Major Austin know. Pass. What about Thornhart? Oh, he's losing a lot of blood, sir. It's only a matter of time. We'll find him and finish him soon enough. You better hope so. Thank you. I will come in and pick up the pamphlets. If I could start to learn what's wrong with Frankie and what Max could do, then I could help him somehow manic. Thanks a lot, Doctor. Bye-bye. Doctor? Yes, Dr. Wallace, I called her. Max, I'm sorry, she says... I know what she says. I know it's true. Just don't. I'm alone. I got three kids. I can't keep up, and I don't know how I'm going to give Frankie what he needs. I... You're not alone, Max. Luna would know. <laughs> Luna would know, but I'm all there is, and Maggie. Maggie's right all along. 
could never hear. But Luna's gone, and I'm running on empty. And who's going to believe Maggie anyway? She's off the wall. I mean, why, why would I want to believe her? Yes, Maggie was strange. And no, you're not crazy. But, Max, I'm here now, and I'm going to make sure that Frankie gets all the help that he needs. And so will Andy and Dylan, and Court will be back from Boston real soon. We're all going to be here for you. All your friends. Everybody who cares. can say is I'll feel a great deal more comfortable when I finally met our invisible partner. And I tell you, I will feel a lot more comfortable when I see Poseidon's cash on the table next to ours. All 30 million. And I didn't understand all the sneaking around either. Well, I can only assume that the use of code names was due to the need for security, didn't you? Either that, or we're dealing with a paranoid psycho. And that describes nine out of ten of my past financial partners. And, if I recall, yours too. Which reminds me, when are you going to show me that new mare you're so proud of? Bertram, how about right now? We'll walk to the stables. After you. Delight. This is Alexandra Olenoff Buchanan. Are you there? Online and happy to hear from my rose. Online and happy to hear from my rose, your rose. I was furious. your nerve. So when can we meet again? Another rendezvous would delight me. I have an appointment tonight, but perhaps we could meet in our usual hotels we in Philadelphia in two hours. Hmm. I'll be there when I meet you in person this time. Oh, yes. I'll make sure somebody will. We could miss the wedding rehearsal this way. Oh, I can't think of a better way. Then again, who needs rehearsal? I know how to say I do. Well, so do I. You know what? I better go before I <laughs> end up with all my clothes off mm -hmm. here. Don't want to walk in there like that, do I? <clears throat> anyway, I will uh, see you at Andrews, okay? Hey. Bye. Love you. What's your excuse now? 